All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay. So today is the day where I talk about whether or not the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 is actually worth it. Now, this device is going to go down in history. It's probably one of the most loved devices, but I still need to put it through the ringer. So the first thing I'm going to talk about on this one is the price. Now, while this is a phenomenal device, the price is too high. This device costs $2,000, folks. For this particular model it's like 1900 and some change or something like that now obviously a lot of us didn't pay those prices we had trade-ins or you know we get disc i got discount on it so um they tried to stall me out though you remember that history i got such a good deal on it with all my with my discounts that i had um you know they 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 drug it out and i wasn't the only one i think i think this device just somehow got thrown in the mix if you wanted this burgundy one, which is the one I have, this limited color burgundy one, it just kind of got thrown on the backside and, you know, people just weren't getting them. But nonetheless, the price, folks, this phone is not worth the price. And reason reason being is because it's just a, a, a slab style device uh, with a, it does a lot. We'll get into software next. It does a lot. But the price of it is too high because there's other folding devices that they offer. The Z Flip 4, as a matter of fact, this has got to be one of my favorite uh, devices ever. Uh, I, I like this one right here, and I highly recommend it that you think about getting this one if you want a foldable device. But what I will tell you is that if you're looking for something that's going to be affordable or you want something that's, you you know, you, you're looking in the wrong direction. There's a lot of people out there that are getting this device financed for 36 months, man. Do not do this. Actually, I can't tell you not to do it. I can tell you that I don't recommend it. I don't recommend you lock yourself in for three years with this device. I don't care how good it is because other versions are going to come out and you're going to be stuck paying that bill. You're going to have to try to sell it and pay it off or whatever. But the price on here, basically, folks, it is not worth it. This is a very expensive device and you can do so much. You can get a tablet and another Samsung phone and a watch for two thousand dollars and then good stuff, too. So you don't have to pay that that two thousand or starting price of eighteen hundred or whatever it is. You don't have to pay that. So even if you have a trade in. Okay, if you get a trade in, yes, you're still giving up something, though, to get that trade in. You know, what I'm saying a lot of people are giving up some good phones. So, you know, I vowed this year, I said, I'm not giving up a really good phone to get my fold. I'm just going to see how low I can get it for price. You know what I mean? So price, not worth it. Now, let's get into software since I'm already here. As you can see here, folks, I finally found my S Pen, <laughs> my Fold Edition S Pen. Oh, my God, I found it. I was so pissed off. I couldn't. I should. I'm not going to say pissed off. I was so upset that uh, I, I, I couldn't find it. And it was sitting right next to me on the desk over there. That desk has a leather mat on it, which is why I couldn't find it. And it blended right in. So. S Pen support on the inside display. Um, this is one of the most functional um, d uh, pens ever, man. I edit with this. Um, I, I when I don't want to touch the screen, like if I clean my screen, I don't want to touch it. I'm using I'm using the S Pen. I'm pretty much navigating, and and I, I hate to say it, but you know it's easy to sign documents with this right here because it's the size of a regular size pen, and I have huge hands, so you know this is perfect. And I got this big canvas right here. The software is beast mode. Now I did open up the uh, sidebar here where all your apps are located, but then you also if you have the S Pen, once you get the like when the S Pen idles down and, and basically the connection is turns off from the device. The little slot there will go away, but while it's there, you can hit that up, and, and, and it'll tell you. Why is it? Oh, the update. Yeah, it's on Android 13 now. So this is a pretty cool animation. I didn't even. I never even seen this before. Um, let's go through it here. It's telling you how to do it. Welcome to blah blah blah. I'm on Android 13 too, and I was going to talk about that, but um, yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty dope. Uh, but um, all right. Thank you. Wow, that's dope. Okay, enjoy it. All right, so. Um, here's what I was looking for right here. So you can set this up. You can put in here anything you want. Uh, you go into settings here. You can see that it's a nice little new animations and stuff there too. So you've got uh, S Pen to text. It works with Samsung keyboard only, obviously. Screen off menu and all those kind of things. You got all your S more S Pen settings, sound. You can do this S Pen is so functional because the Air Command is beast mode, and you can actually turn it off. Uh, but you need the S Pen to do so. You can't just go into any. If this S Pen isn't around, you don't get that functionality. Trust me, you don't. I've tried. So um, you just tap on it, and if you hold this button, you can double double tap on the screen, and you'll get your um, quick menu like this, and you can just start writing, um, you know, uh, whatever you want to write. So let's see here. Twenty twenty three. Yeah. 
Um, I took a class on handwriting years ago. So I, I know how to write calligraphy and everything. But nonetheless, um, this pen, you navigate with it. You do whatever you want to do with it. It's, it's a beast mode option. And there is no reason why you should not have this pen. If you got this device or whatever, you probably got this, this pen free because it came when they first booted it up. They gave you this case with it free. Now, this is that multiple, uh, the, the, this case right here pops off and it has the kickstand and everything with it. So this is the case that I'm using with it. So, um, yeah, you have the option and, and a lot of people can get, you got this pen for free, but some people, you can buy it now. I found that case combination at Best Buy for 20 bucks on sale during like what they call Black Friday, I guess. And I was like, dang, I should just buy an extra one just because. But, um... It's pretty nice, man, to know that, um, you know, you, you you can use this S Pen to navigate the device and it's just a beautiful thing, man. I'm, I'm so happy that the S Pen is an option uh, on the uh, this lineup now because uh, it, it was not. Now, the disadvantages to the S Pen, uh, you know, it, it, it does not work on the front display. This is something that people really wanted. Uh, and it just does not. Now, I personally don't have to have that on this front display because I don't need, to, I don't see the purpose of using the S Pen on the front display, but there are people that do see the purpose and I respect them for using it and getting the most out of this device if they can do so. And I guess it's kind of would be nice to use this on the front display. Again, everybody has a purpose for something and you know everybody's uh, options and, and needs and wants are not the same. So the software on here is loaded to the gills. Even on this front display, you get access to this this setup right here so it, it's all the same i really like how they mirror this right here so the software folks one you and now that i'm officially on android 13 it is it's, it's it was already good on android 12 it's just that I, we were behind and we, i wanted to see what else it would bring and then once i got it on my z flip 4 and i got it on my ultra a long time ago i knew what it was going to bring one ui 5 is beast mode for performance and that's something that you just need to remember. One UI 5 is great on this device. The software performance, everything is on point. You should not have very many problems. You might have some problems, but you shouldn't have very many. So software is totally worth it. Now the battery, this is where Samsung, uh, they kind of threw a, a curveball to everybody because everybody was thinking this device was gonna have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So this is where I'm kind of splitting hairs here because this should have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery because of the price. See, the price isn't worth it. And then you put this same battery in here with 4,400 milliamps, but the flip side of that is that my battery life is better than the <laughs> before, and it's because of that internal processor, the Snapdragon 8 Gen version one or whatever it is, Gen one. That processor takes this device over the top. The battery, on life, battery life on this thing is absolutely ridiculous for me going through a day and a half easy. And I know you're gonna say, that's it, you know what I'm saying? But what this thing is pushing, it's got a lot of power in here. So let's go into display real quick uh, and go down here and uh, let's see here. I wanna get to my, um, where's the, uh, where it shows the, uh, the, the uh, yeah, here we go. So I'm in here at adaptive, so I got it at 120 hertz. And um, you got the screen mode, I got it to vivid. Go into advanced settings, you can change all this. It's pushing uh, a lot, it's pushing a lot. So uh, don't look at my font size. Um, it's pushing a lot. And so you, you, you're you gonna need, oh, this is what I want, I wanna change this and see how I like it like this now. Yeah, no, nah, I don't like that. No, nope. no, nope. but um, you're going to need a big battery to actually, you know, to, to use this. And and ultimately what I've seen is that the uh, fold with this 4400 milliamp hour battery, it's doing phenomenal for what it is. This screen is a quad HD 120 hertz display. I mean, this is pushing the pixels. So it, you're gonna need a battery that's gonna work. So what they did was they chose to put the newer process in here and it's still fairly thin too. When you when you look at it like this, they chose to put this newer battery and a newer processor in here and did a bunch of performance testing with it and realized we don't need to put a bigger battery in here, but I still think they cheated us on that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of splitting the hair. I'll split the coin on that one. It may have phenomenal battery or whatever, but 
they really should have put a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in here just to slip, just to make sure to make me feel like I'm getting at least my money's worth or whatever. So yeah, battery life is worth it, but I want a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And what they're going to do is they're going to put it in the next one and then raise the price up. You know what I'm saying? So price, not so much worth it. Battery software, totally worth it. Performance, totally worth it. Screen. Let me load up uh, a video here. All right, folks, as you can see there, I didn't even crank it up to 100% brightness because this, this display is just one of the most beautiful, oh my gosh, this is one of the most beautiful displays on any device out there. I mean, this, this, this device, I almost wanna say phone, but this device is absolutely great, man. You cannot get this type of quality. And this is why Samsung is winning in this area because no one's competing in the US with them. I wish the US would stop this nonsense and let Huawei come over, let Oppo come over, let all these other companies come over and smash these the Samsung because I know they can do it. The Oppo Find N2 just dropped. The Oppo Find N uh, foldable like this just dropped too. And they cost about the same in the fold. The N costs less than this. Um, and that form factor is perfect. It's perfect. I'm telling you. So, but right now though, Samsung is winning, no competition over here in the US. This device has no competition for foldable phones in this form factor, none in the US. Name one, I know you can't, but if you're international, you're gonna say, oh no, we got this over here, we got this over here, we got them all over here. Huawei and all those other companies should be allowed to sell their foldable, foldable devices in the US, so give the consumer some, some, some competition, some choices, that's what's better. So this is from my car channel. If you don't follow my car channel, this is one of my cars. This is my 23 convertible LT1. Drop some, I dropped some wheels on it, got the custom leather done, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm doing it like that. That's just how I'm doing it. Let me brush my shoulder off real quick. Hold on. Okay, we back. Now, um, this display though, and the speaker quality is ridiculous, man. It is freaking ridiculous. This is what I'm talking about when, you come, when it comes to a folding device. This is what we need to see. I actually love the six by five. I even record video with the six by five. That's why, you know, the original form factor is here for the video, but I like to zoom in and catch it all. You know what I'm saying? I love to fill the screen, but you won't find good quality like this in very many places, folks. This is beast mode right here. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this thing is beautiful in person. And remember, I only have it at 50% brightness right now. So imagine if I go ahead and drop this joint up to a hundred. You don't have to imagine, check it out. Look at that. Ooh, wee. Now I don't know how well this comes across uh, with the Sigma lens or whatever, but God, oh, this thing is crazy right here in person. It's so bright. The brightness on here is, I think, between 1200 and 1500 nits or nitness on the brightness, but it may not be 2000 or 1750 like the iPhone. But the point is, the iPhone don't have no canvas like this, though. I mean, I'm not throwing shade. I got it. You know what I'm saying? But the iPhone don't have no canvas like this, though. Apple don't have no folding device like this. And when they come out with a folding device, they're gonna bring it, they're gonna bring it, but then they're gonna close something else off. They're gonna shut down, uh, uh, they're gonna shut down the iPad lineup or something. They're gonna do something and start calling it the iPad phone edition or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna do something. They're not just gonna throw something like this out there and not put the price at $2,500 to start. They're just not gonna do it. Nonetheless, Samsung is the king right now. They're the king right now. And that's just what it is, man. They they run in that they run in that space, uh, and it's just nobody's freaking touching them right now, man. They're not touching them in this space, and no one can say that that anybody is. And the U.S. I have to keep stressing that. And the U.S. This is what we're talking about. So, is the display worth it? Is the speakers worth it? Of course, of course it is, folks. Now let's get into something that I really love. Um, I was watching Minister Farragon, so let me move this over here. I'm going to go ahead and take some photos. Now, I know I've been taking photos. Where are my two little prop set? Prop set. Here we go. I have um, the new, this is my old Samsung mic, and I've also bought the new one. 
that came out. I didn't put a video out on this. This is a new one that has a camera built in right here. It's pretty dope. But I've been taking photos of these two items when I do these videos. Uh, so let me um, brush off the back of the camera here. All right. And let's get the camera app open and I'll just take those same couple photos that I take uh, when I do it with the other ones. So I always get in kind of close like this. See if I can get that on the first snap. All right. Now, let's look at those. So the detail in this area right here. Whoa. That is full full zoom. That is freaking crazy. That's really good, folks. This is some nice it's just detail, bro. This is this is a quality set of cameras. Now, oh wait, going into the cameras, this is where things get really good. I can do this right here. Boom, look at this right here. Look at this. Look at this, huh? This is quality software on the camera. You start doing video chat like this, you start taking photos, you don't need anybody to do anything with this joint right here, man. You start to get into um, video and stuff like this, you can, you can set this up any way you want. And you get this little snippet over here, uh, when you use your cameras, you get a little snippet of the software right here, which is great. It's just, it's so nice. And you just flip it open like this, boom. You're back in full screen. Like I said, I love to shoot in 6x5. I'm not lying to you. I love shooting in 6x5. I'm going to bring you more content in 6x5 too. Because I have a new bracket. Um, I got a new bracket specifically for the Fold 4. It's a beautiful bracket. And it's made for these bigger uh, devices like this. So, um, there's a little button right here. that unlocks that bottom jaw. So, it's unlocked. And then I can go all the way out to like a 12 inch tablet if I want to, but I needed something for the full four to record. So I got a new one here, you mount it there. I even got a spot here for a microphone if I want to do that. What? Both sides, son. So I bought this specifically and it also twists like this to whatever I want to do. Boom. So I, I'm going to start bringing a little bit more six by five content because people love that. I love it. I think it's beast mode. So. Um, you can go, you can even, I think, I believe I do that in pro video too. Sometimes let me see here. Yeah. Oh, uh, wait, let me go back. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's the only thing about pro video. Uh, I mean, the only thing about six by five content, you cannot do anything higher than, uh, full HD. It's not available in the current r uh, ratio. You know what I'm saying? But looking at the ratios, look, I can go 21 by nine and I can boom out whatever I want. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's sick right there. You could do it. I love it. But this pro mode is where I shoot a lot of video when I'm using this joint right here. So, folks, point point is, cameras, beast mode. They have won a lot of contests over here. I would gladly take these, these cameras over a lot of cameras on any day. Now, I do have a camera lens protector on there. That's why it's black and not burgundy with the rest of the phone. But... Now let's look at what I'm talking about hardware wise. So cameras, totally worth it. Now, hardware. You got your fingerprint reader on this side right here inside the power button. That's beast mode. Volume rocker, these are perfectly placed folks. This is how it should be done. Stop putting the volume rocker below the power button. Come on son, stop. The power button's up here in the volume. I get it, but this just is so, this is so much better. This is so much better. And I also like when it's it's on either side too. I like when it's like that too. That's better than having the volume rocker on the bottom. That's just horrible to me. So we're gonna get out of here real quick and do the hardware and we'll be good to go. Now you got this 6.2 inch high res display on the front and then this opens up to I believe a 7.1 or something like 7.6 on the inside screen. Beast mode hardware. And I got the burgundy one and so I got the top notch one. That's how I feel about it. You got speakers on the top speakers on the bottom type c mic for calls and cancellation mics on the top the hinge absolutely beautiful this is how they working it right here the burgundy joints is the way to go if you didn't get the burgundy mm, i don't know then obviously the hardware is this big old screen and stuff on the inside too like i said but folks is this phone worth it is this device worth it Ooh, wee that's a tough one that's a tough one if you're a creator you're gonna love, love, love this device, man. If, if you're a regular person, you're gonna love, love, love this device, man. So I would say 
Yeah, it's worth it. A lot of people are gonna um a lot of people are going to wonder if they should actually get this device uh because of the price and the price isn't worth it, but if you want some of the best and latest hardware, you want the best device that's ever offered, ooh wee, this is it. This is one of the top of the line devices that you can never put in your possession, but the bad part is it's really expensive. It, had to it has tons of features and options. It has one of the best looking displays on the market. It's got a beautiful design. The cameras are beast mode. The performance is great. The software is loaded. The battery is right. The price is not. So, check the boxes on everything except one thing. This is still a win. It's your man Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed. Is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 worth it? Let's get it. Tell me in the comments. I'll see you down there. Take care.